Well, um, I would say yes and no. I, I, my relationship with Judaism always feels sort of fraught to me. And it's hard for me to imagine, I mean, let me never say never in life with God, it's hard for me to imagine it not feeling fraught. Mm -hmm. Because I feel a lot of guilt about my conversion. And in a way that I think is is different from a Catholic becoming Protestant, say, I don't really feel that I have permission to, um, I feel like I have permission to appreciate from afar things about Judaism. Mm -hmm. And it feels very important to me to not feel like I am cherry picking. Mm -hmm. And for me, that feels like the danger that I, that my leaving Judaism was so painful for so many people and that the particular the particulars of converting from Judaism to Christianity for historical reasons mm -hmm. and theological reasons are so painful mm -hmm. um, that it it almost feels like part of you know, I think there's much about my conversion to celebrate and there's also penance that always feels to me like it is also something to be there's penitential and lamenting mm -hmm. work to be done mm -hmm. and that in a sense part of my penance is to recognize that I can't um, I can't engage in certain aspects of Judaism that I would mm -hmm. perhaps like to. Mm -hmm. So is that because you they, uh, you feel like they've ostracized you because of? No, I feel like I ostracized myself. Ostracized I mean, I feel like I left a community in a way that was particularly painful. For a, I left a, I left community A for community B, and community B has historically done a lot of violence to community A. True. And Community B's theological story is all about overtaking Community A's theological story, <laughs> right? It's not like okay. being a Baptist and becoming a Methodist. Um, so I feel like but I left that community and um, I have to live with having left it. Yeah. So when Jewish friends or Jewish relatives invite me into a Passover Seder, a holiday practice, um, I feel grateful and delighted and happy to participate, but I feel like I don't, I can't just go do it, right? Mm -hmm. The exception that I make to that is my own life of study. I mean, I continue to be very formed by, and in some ways perhaps more formed by than I was 20 years ago when I was still a practicing Jew, formed by rabbinic interpretation. Um, and that feels very important to me, and it also feels important to me um, to to continue to speak to the church about mm -hmm. that history of violence, about Judaism. Obviously, I'm only doing that from my perspective, and I'm not speaking for Judaism when I do that. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like I have a lot of opportunities to visit a church and do an adult ed session, and it might be something as simple as looking at the Lord's Prayer and, and showing actually like Jesus didn't just invent this. This is actually all very consistent with first century mm -hmm. CE Jewish prayer. Like right. look at how this comes out of Jewish reasoning and Jewish praying. Sure. Um, so it might be something as simple as that or it might be doing some of the more kind of painful historical work of helping the church know its own history of its violence toward Jews and Judaism, which I think most American Christians are totally that. unaware of. Uh, yeah. um, so that that feels like something that I'm in a, not a unique position to do, but in a, an uncommon position to yeah. do, and it feels important.